This episode of the Swoopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Canadian will be at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria this Thursday in Cary for some barbecue and bingo from 4 to 7. This is the only chance you can get some Mad Canadian barbecue this, this week, so be sure to head out again to Cary, the OLC Shrine Cafeteria, 4 to 7, to get some of that delicious Mad Canadian Barbecue Company food, where they are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company, who... The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based, fresh, roast-to-order, micro-roaster, fair trade certified, USD organic, veteran-owned, marine-owned, Perrysburg, outside of Toledo, Ohio-based coffee company. I, 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 I that was that was good. I, I liked that. Uh, you can save money doing a subscribe and save service. If you find that one coffee that is your favorite coffee, you can get a few bucks off by doing a subscribe and save, and that way, not only are you saving a few bucks. But you are also going to ensure that you never, ever run out. Uh, they have free shipping for orders over $50. They have gift cards available if you, there's a coffee lover in your life. Um, as far as gifts go, I do recommend the whole shebang. However, that is at this very moment as we're recording out of stock. So maybe just keep an eye on that. It might come back, but it's a great sampler platter uh, that you can uh, give uh, the, the coffee lover in your life a whole selection of different uh, those are the unflavored coffees. I believe there's like 13 or 14 of them in there. So uh, you can find your new favorite coffee or maybe your loved one's new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's going on, everybody? Everyone is having a good week so far. Going to get into some national... Um, National coverage from this past weekend here, and a lot of, a lot of chaos, Jared. Lots of chaos. Cha yes. Love let's, me let's... some good. Cha love me some team chaos that does not include have... Ohio State. Yeah. Did we have twin couple? Twin? Oh, what? What? Uh, quintuple? That's that's how you say that. A quintuple oh, yeah. chaos weekend. Yes. You know what? Let's 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 stop beating around the bush. Let's get into it. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you doing today? Good, sir. You know, we had a lot of chaos this past weekend, as we were just telling our YouTube audience. Um, by the way, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, if, you're, if, you, if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, specifically uh, us at the Sloopcast. Uh, you can do so by going to youtube.thesloopcast.com and, and subscribe to us there. Um, and also if you don't know an audio version of the podcast is available, uh, if you just want to listen and maybe you're used to watching us on, on YouTube, you can just listen to us as well. Um, I totally lost, I, I went into self-promotion mode and totally lost the, oh, we had a quintuple, we had a quintuple chaos weekend, quintuple yes, so chaos weekend, uh, sort of, it, maybe two of the and three, well, three for sure. Maybe yes. two halves. Maybe maybe it's a quadruple. No, let, we'll, figure it it. we'll figure it out. We'll figure it. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Let's start with the Big Ten real quick with some of these teams here. Maryland beats Indiana. Rutgers beats Illinois. Purdue beats Nebraska. Minnesota beats Northwestern. And then the other games here, Jared. Let's start with Wisconsin. Wisconsin completely destroying Iowa. If you want to say that, twenty-seven to seven. They started off with a 17-0 run. Yeah. Or maybe it was 20-0. I forget. But either way, when I saw it, it was 20 to nothing run. And just Iowa, just no offense, Jared. No offense. Tell, tell me tell me if you were surprised to hear that off Iowa with no offense. Yeah, even when they were good, or at least perceived as good, uh, they were, you know, they were number two in the country at one point. Um I I, I think it's worth pointing out that he that was never deserved but even at that point they were like leading all of power five in punting which is not a category you want to be leading in um 
they did put 56 on Maryland, but that was um, that was baby Tua having a complete meltdown turnover wise that that aided in that more than it was their offense. That was that was that was a defensive performance. Um, he 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 tries. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, Iowa proving once again that they can't, they, they, they can't get into a shootout and win. And I, I guess 27 points in the big 10 West counts as a shootout. Well, but... in this game, any more than 10 points is a shootout. Well, especially, con- up... especially considering Wisconsin went up big early which forces Iowa to go to one dimensional and Iowa's offense isn't good when it's two dimensional, let alone one dimensional and Wisconsin's defense is good enough. Yep. All right. And the other game here, Jared, other than Ohio state beating Penn state, listen to yesterday, yesterday's episode for that. Big brother taking down yeah. little brother, 37 to 33. That's right. Sparty. Two in a row now, two in a row over their little brother, Michigan. Yeah. Um, so we have two chaos situations in the Big Ten alone already, although this one is it's pseudo chaos. We had an undefeated team lose, but they were playing another undefeated team, both in the top 10. So pseudo chaos, pseudo chaos. Uh, but it's still a loss for Michigan. Uh, which, you know, as an Ohio State fan, and I know there's a lot of people that'd be like, well, it would have been better for Ohio State's resume had that Ohio State's winning in. Might it affect if they're, I I personally think that as long as Ohio State wins out, they're going to be either the number two or the number three seed regardless. So it doesn't even affect who they play. Um, So if Ohio State wins out, I think whatever, they're It just might depend upon if they wear scarlet or white during their playoff game. I think that's about it. So uh, Ohio State. I don't it doesn't matter to me. So, So, yeah, let's have Michigan lose. Kyle, are we all underrating Sparty? Well, I was just about to get into that Sparty. Now the last Big Ten undefeated team. And coming Uh, into the season, there was there was a lot of sport um, sport medias. Sport medias. That, sport medias. <laughs> Just sport media, I think, is what you're going for there, Kyle. Yes. Projected Sparty to be last in the division. And here they and here they are, and here they are, undefeated going into November. I, I didn't I didn't um expect Sparty to be undefeated coming into November here. Um but yeah, I mean, you, you got to give them a lot of you got to give them a lot of credit in this game. It's they they fought they fought back. They were down, what was it? It was like thirty. It was like seventeen to thirty or something like that at one point, and it was it, it seemed like Michigan was um, pulling away and they were gonna they were gonna win the game. But I mean, hats off to the Sparty to be able to pull out a win there. That was, that was just a great, uh, great game for, for the Spartans. Absolutely. Um, the, the Paul Bunyan trophy obviously won, um, Michigan, not out of the playoffs yet, but the, definitely their first blow. Um, Kyle, I've pulled the, I have pulled up the, um, the tier chart. I just now noticed I didn't recenter the after week thing and that's bothering me, but I'm just going to have to deal with it. Um, we have Sparty, we have Michigan, we have Iowa. How do we move these teams? They're all currently a, where do they end up now? All right. Moving to some things around so I can see. Uh, here we go. All right. Uh, for S tier. S tier, I think S tier, you, you keep everybody where they're at. A tier, and I think you got to move Michigan down to B. I think you move Michigan down to B. And Iowa, I think Iowa, you got to move them. I'm almost hesitant just to severely drop them to maybe even C. Well, this is and, their second loss, yes? Yeah, it's their second loss, and... They just don't have the offense to compete with even these B-level teams here. I agree. So, 
So yeah, I, I totally I, I agree. Say just drop them all the way to C. Sparty, you keep them at A. Uh, the way that they're going, I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll be an S tier, but I don't think at this point. And I think everybody else, you, you keep them at, at A there. Oregon, you keep them at A. Alabama, you keep them at A. Well, I, and I just if we have anyone listening to the show or watching the the podcast who's maybe not because we reformatted this we moved this into playoff mode and therefore we have four teams in s period there will be four teams in the s tier those are our in the playoffs as of the moment teams uh kyle the the question i have for you is (laughs) sparty sparty gets a top 10 win should we have them they're undefeated. They just get a top 10 win. I don't know, man. I, I feel like maybe we should be looking at them in the top four. Cincinnati has looked, I mean, I mean, we can get to Cincinnati here in a second. We can, we, let's talk about Cincinnati right now. Um, um, sure. Go ahead, let's go ahead and talk about Cincinnati then. Yeah. Uh, Cincinnati second straight week with a bit of a struggle. Um, they don't, uh, and like they, they end up getting a decent looking final score, 31 to 12 over Tulane, who only has one win on the season. Tulane only has one win on the season and they're, they're not a good football team. And they were in this game fairly late. They were in the game fairly late. Let's, let's be honest. Um, second week in a row, Cincinnati, not looking great. I think we need to have serious conversations about if they still belong in our top four, um, potentially. And, you know, just like Bama's Bama. And I know people don't like me saying that or like hearing that, but the talent level at Bama is the talent level at Bama. Although I think they have to figure a lot of stuff out between now and November. Um, But I kind of want to move Sparty up in place of Cincinnati. Thoughts? Kyle's thinking. Kyle's thinking real hard on this one. Yeah, it, it's hard. It's hard. Um, cause I mean, you got Michigan State who had a has a had a top ten win against against their um, their little brother. I I I think so. I I I I think you can probably put Sparty right there. Yeah, I think you can probably swap them right now. Cause cause one one thing that's really hurting Cincinnati is. They got a they got a victory over Indiana, which at the time seemed like a good win. Indiana only has two wins for the season. Are over. They haven't won a, a Big Ten conference game yet. And then Notre Dame's Notre Dame. They don't look all that impressive. They're they're, they're a good team. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to um, say that they're not a, a not a good team, but it, it's just not the Notre Dame that we thought they were. Uh, to be fair, they are the Notre Dame. I thought they were, okay. <laughs> but this is about who I thought they were. Okay. Um, so, so I think Oregon, Alabama, Cincinnati, perfectly fine there. Now Wake Forest, Jared, hear me out. Wake Forest. Okay. Undefeated. The I think the last undefeated team in the, um. yep, last undefeated team in the ACC. I think they've been the last undefeated team in the ACC for a while now. Yeah. They're taking care of. They took care of business against Duke, which they should have. They should have. Yeah. There's there's definitely teams that they when they should just outright beat a team, and they don't look as great. And hence, look at Cincinnati, but they took care of business. They have a they have a really good offense this year, but look at who they played though. Being undefeated in a in a Power Five conference here, should you move them up to the A tier? They they have a do they have a legit shot of making making the the um the playoffs? I, I if they went if they went out, I think the the shot is decent enough that we should move them up to A tier. I I okay. agree. Um, would I and we're not ranking the teams within here. That's not what we're doing. But if we were. I'd be more apt to put them here than I were here. <laughs> yes. Um, but, but 
but there's no, there's no, I mean, we have Georgia, who I think is the consensus number one in fourth, if, but th that's not what we're doing here. That's not what we're doing here. They're, they're either in the tier or they're not. There's, there's no ranking within yep. the tier, but um, yeah, I, I, I agree, Kyle. Um, okay. I think Wake Forest deserves to be moved up to A tier. Um, we don't have a number restriction on A tier. We can do whatever we want with it, but yeah. All right. Um, I'm just going to go through for the rest of these here. Um, I'm just looking at what we put in the notes here, Jared. Uh, Coastal Carolina uh, beats Troy. I they didn't look all that good either. No, and they and they lost last week. And uh, you you could easily question if they even still belong on this chart at all. Uh, so Kyle, do do they get to live I, I, on the chart? I think they do. It's a one loss team. Not there. You can't say there's a ton of teams with one loss, so you can keep them in C. Eh. Okay. Pitt. Yeah. Pitt, Jared. Losing to Miami, 38-34 to 34 in this game. Now you have Pitt with two losses now. Yeah, I agree. Move them down. There. Yeah, <laughs> Move I them already down did the it. There. I feel, I feel, I know I was the one that championed them up the chart in the past. So I feel like mm -hmm. you were trying to convince me, but I was already there. Um, I right. like Kyle Pickett. I like Pitt. But if we're talking about them in the framing of a playoff team, which is what we're doing here, mm -hmm. it's it's not happening. Yep. All right. To cover that game, that game, Baylor had a scare against Texas. I thought Texas and silly me thought was going to pull up the upset here, but Texas being Texas here and um, blew it and Baylor come out with a win. 31-24. I, th I think that I think they should still be in the B tier. I think they they have a legit they have a legit shot of winning their conference, along with um, Oklahoma State as well, which I think they had an off week. Nope, no. <laughs> well, you could call it an off week. They beat, they beat Kansas fifty five to three. <laughs> so I th I think you can keep. Well, and here's the question then with Oklahoma State. Do they move up to the A tier? No. Do you move Oklahoma State up to the A? I don't. Um, I, I don't. I, I, just, I don't like them talent wise. I don't think that they could realistically hang okay. with. Like, I, I maybe they could realistically hang with Wake Forest is the only team in the A tier. I feel like they could actually hang with talent wise. Um, and Cincinnati. even Cincinnati. Maybe. I they, okay, okay, maybe. But those two teams are undefeated. Okay. Th those two teams are in the A tier, not necessarily purely based off of their athletic capability, but also based off of the fact that they're undefeated. So okay. fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Iowa State losing to West Virginia. Iowa State goes off the board now, Jared. I agree. Right. Matt Campbell Oklahoma might be a bit distracted looking around right. at some other jobs. Oklahoma, I'll be I'll be frank, Jared. I didn't watch this game at all, but <laughs> Oklahoma beat Texas Tech fifty-two to twenty-one. Yeah, they they did what they should have done, and I I, and I again I didn't watch any of this game either, uh, but I I believe that <laughs> Tech just fired their coach. Yes, they did. Um, yeah, it's fine. Whatever. It's it is what it is. Uh, they they belong absolutely either in the S or the A tier, if you want to tell me that you'd rather have Oregon or Bama or Cincinnati in there instead of them, I would listen to your argument. Um, and I wouldn't even necessarily disagree with your argument. I, I think that it's, it's a real jumbled mess right now. And, yeah. but, but ultimately I think Oklahoma is, I don't think Oklahoma is undefeated. I know Oklahoma is undefeated, but I think that should play a factor in it. Not okay. it's not all factor, but it's a factor, and I think that they are playing better now. Now that they have made the correct decision at quarterback, mm -hmm. and that last one, I I think we already discussed. It's Oregon, Oregon stay in the A tier. They beat Colorado fifty-two to twenty-nine. Twenty-nine is a lot to give up if you're if you're wanting to be a playoff team. To a Colorado I think there team. was a lot of junk points late with that game. And I think that's also true with Oklahoma. Um, 
I, I and I think that I think that's what happened with those games. I regardless, those teams won the, their games outright. They they, I, I think, or, yeah, Oregon. I still an A tier. I still think they're yeah. a very good team. Can easily can win their their conference. So yeah, keep them in the A tier as well. Jared, before we go into, I think before we go into the next uh, group of games here, I think this would be a good break for some, for an ad read. I agree. Am I going first? So you let, going first. Uh, let's, let's hear from the Iron Bean Coffee Company and what they have for today. Kyle, I have exciting news for you. If you're well, a me. Iron Bean Coffee Company fan, and uh, I wish I had noticed this for the Monday ad read, but I didn't. Uh, so my bad. So maybe it's still available. Maybe it's not because it doesn't last too long when it is. Um, when it when it is available, um, but the Raging Tiger, which is a limited supply barrel aged coffee uh, that the Iron Bee Coffee Company offers is is available. It's not in stock typically too often and it's not in stock uh typically for too long but it's in since it's in stock right now so at least right now as we record this on a sunday uh unfortunately maybe by the time this gets released on a tuesday it's not but as of right this second it is available uh let's take a look at this the raging tiger is evolving into something that will remain in the records and taught in the history books for centuries and here's why uh this is a 10 year old alia craig bourbon barrel um uh, a lot of stuff here. Um, distillers of Heaven Hill Orange Tiger uh, with experimental minds and creative talent. Toledo of the uh, Toledo Spirits Company. Um, uh, cinnamon rolled from the thin bark of Mexican cinnamon trees uh, and Ugandan vanilla. Uh, there are three more. Uh, bathing. In this mixture uh, are, especially, uh, are specialty Colombian beans, 200 pounds to be exact. The Raging Tiger is raising the bar on infused small batch coffee. No flavor oils, nothing artificial. Be ready. It's it's available. It's here. Uh, hopefully it is by the time you guys hear this. Uh, but you can find if you don't if you can't find that coffee, they still have a bunch of amazing coffees uh, available to you. Uh, over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian will be, as I mentioned before, at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria for some barbecue and bingo in Cary this Thursday, 4 to 7. Don't miss out. This is your one chance this week to get some of that delicious barbecue from the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Uh, some some re recent reviews here that I want to I want to share to people who are kind of on the fence. Uh, maybe I don't know if I want to go to Cary to get some. Well, got one here saying that they tried they tried the brisket just recently and was delicious, the best brisket that they've had in a long time. And here and here's um here's a woman who said that she hired to serve her staff at a elementary school. Very good barbecue, and the baked beans were her favorite. Very delicious. And here's, a, and here's another one just um, too long ago. Had the brisket sandwich with the barbecue sauce and it was the best she's ever had. Brisket was hot and juicy. Barbecue sauce was sweet, but not too sweet. And the portion was like no other. Very generous. Just like our sponsor, the McKinney Barbecue Company, who is the official sponsor of the Sloopcast and the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. I want to make a quick note because I forgot to do it during the last episode. Uh, so before we jump back into the show, um, our Thursday episode, our Know Your Enemy for Nebraska, uh, might be out a bit late. Uh, Kyle's got some travel stuff. He's going to be back in time, but we wanna, might not record it until late, which means like rendering and uploading takes time and making thumbnails and stuff that takes time. So um, don't look for that Thursday morning, but maybe just a Thursday late morning or early afternoon or something like that. So uh, just a quick note that the Thursday episode will probably be rela uh, released a tad bit late. Wanted to do that while people were still listening. All right. Um, All right, Jared. All right Jared, let's let us go into uh, let me pull this back up. All right. Uh, Georgia 
Georgia doing Georgia things, just completely demolishes Florida 34 to 7. They're the number one team. They stay where they're at. Uh, yeah, I, I do. I do want to give Florida a tad bit of credit here, though. Um, as this game looked like it was going to be competitive for a moment, um, and then Florida turned the ball over th- three times in the last like minute or two minutes rather of the of the first half. So it really, honestly, looked like going into the end of the first half that it was going to be like three nothing. Like it, or was it seven, nothing I forget. But the point is, is that they were going to be down like a score going in. It was three, nothing. Thank you. Gangland. Georgia. This isn't, I don't think necessarily the huge win that, that maybe it seems by looking just at the score uh, without yeah. taking into consideration the disaster that was the very end of the first half for Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. But but Georgia's defense, though, only only allowed Florida to score seven points. Oh, yeah. Take nothing away from the defense for sure. Um, I'm, I'm more talking about the I'm more talking about the amount of points that they put up than I am their defense. Their defense is unquestionably mm-hmm. great. Uh, yep. un, unquestioned. Uh, their defense is amazing, especially their defensive line. I'm not taking anything away from Georgia in that respect. Talked about Wake Forest already. Uh, talked about Oklahoma State already. Auburn. That's a little too far, Hoosier. That's a yep. little too far. Auburn. This was this was our this was our chaos. This was our chaos game here, Jared. Auburn beats Ole Miss thirty-one to twenty. Yeah, um, Ole Miss. There, there's a lot of teams that have been in the top ten this year, and I'm not. This isn't me like trying to shit on the SEC because oh, the SEC da da da. Because there's been there's been some Big Ten teams in the top ten this year that have not been deserving of being in the top ten. Uh, there's been some Big Twelve teams in the in the top ten not deserving to be in the top ten. I don't think there are ten good teams. I think there are at most about eight good teams right now. Um, so mm-hmm. there's going to be a lot of teams slip in there who maybe shouldn't be, but speaking of, speaking of a team that shouldn't be. So o- Ole Miss, Ole Miss just got knocked down to where they should be, which, um, yeah, they, they, we moving them to the C tier. That's their second yep. loss. Yep. I'd move them down to the C tier. Yes. Uh, speaking of teams that shouldn't be highly ranked Kentucky. Yeah. Same losing, thing. losing, losing to Mississippi state 31 to 17. I don't know. Do we, do we move Kentucky completely off the board? Cause I'm, I'm almost tempted to. Is that, is that loss number two for them now? I think that is loss number two. That is I think, loss... I think we, I think we keep them there for now. It's fine. You're, you're, you're too, you're too generous. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, they'll, Houston. Their, their losses are coming. Don't worry. We'll have opportunity. Houston beats SMU 44 to 37. So SMU, Jared goes off the board. I agree. Bye bye, SMU. All right. Uh, Notre Dame, Notre Dame and North Carolina. This was up. This was a 44 to 34 was the, was the final score here. As I'm pulling, pulling this up here. It was a really close game back and forth. I, Looking here at halftime, it was 17 to 13. North Carolina takes the lead. Notre Dame takes it back. It just a bunch of back and forth here. But yeah, I think Notre Dame just stays in the B tier. They're, they're only lost one, and that's to Cincinnati. They're winning the running games at all the other games here, but just not in the dominant fashion that a lot of these teams above them have been. I, I, I agree. Um, North Carolina is not the team we thought they were going to be. I think there was a point in time and we were like, oh man, when, when does Notre Dame and North Carolina play? Oh man, when does North Carolina and Clemson play? Oh man, when does, and a lot of those, a lot of those uh, ACC teams, especially just haven't panned out the way we were sort of uh, expecting them to. Uh, So, I mean, they, they win 10 points over a North Carolina team. That's not, not very good. Um, I, I think B tier is appropriate for them. I agree. Uh, BYU. Do we have Looking BYU? at the B tier right now, I'm almost wondering if we if we did Michigan wrong. 
Because I think if you look at that B tier, I think Michigan's clearly the best team in that B tier. Okay. They have they one be... loss. Okay, okay. They they may be the best in the B tier, but they belong in the B tier. All right. I I think I disagree, but uh, I'm going to let you have this one. All right. Uh, San Diego State is the last team on here that we have not ranked yet. Losing to Fresno State 30 to 20. So that is another team going off our list. I totally missed that. We, Kyle, we had a, a sectuple chaos weekend. Of course, that shows you how much I was paying attention <laughs> to uh, well, what th- San Diego State only, was doing. I think the only other one here, and I totally fine if you don't rank them here, maybe maybe BYU. BYU has a shootout with um, Virginia, beats them 66 to 49. They're a two-loss team, but I, you can put them in the C tier if you think. Or, or how many not. losses? They have two. Yeah, I okay. don't think they have. I don't think they've played a good enough schedule to have lost twice and and be I, and be in the and be in contention. Um, Kyle, does Penn State still belong? They 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 that's loss number three for them. Um, it was a good loss. I thought I I come out of this with more respect for Penn State than I had going into it. Um, it almost feels like it's not a very justified thing to do, but the fact of the matter is, is that they lost their third game. They lost and their I, third game. Now, now, if all three of their games were against top teams, yeah, I'd be fine with keeping them at C. But fact with the of the matter lo- is, with their previous loss to Illinois and then losing again here at Ohio State, yeah, I, I think they're on the cusp of going back to to see but as of our week nine here how do we have anyone with three losses on the chart anywhere uh let me look. Every, every, everyone here no because the only team that i'm seeing that's ranked in the um the ap that has three losses is penn state oh they, they kept them in the ap again mm-hmm. shows you how much i care about the polls yeah they only dropped them like two spots that's nice. Uh, and deserved, by the way. I don't know why they, if you play the number five team in the country and you play them well, it's sort of like, of course, Florida wasn't ranked going into their game with Georgia. But, but I, I don't understand. Again, I don't, we shouldn't talk about the AP, but no. I don't know why they have Alabama so high still. Because it's Alabama. It's fine. I don't care. Yeah, uh, I guess. The playoff, the playoff rankings are coming out this week. They'll put so, out a playoff rankings and then the sheep over at the AP will conform their rankings to yeah. what the playoff committee did, because so, if they don't, then they get exposed as being irrelevant. All right, Jared. So should we kind of reorder S and A real quick? Because we can kind of use this as our playoff our sloop, our sloop cast playoff projection here. So absolutely. Let, let's kind of let's kind of re rechange this a little bit. So. I, I I like it the way it is, honestly. I think Well, well I, th- I think if we if we want to change at least the order, especially especially like the, the top six. The top six there. So like if you have Georgia first. Oh, then, so you want to actually put them in order? Yeah. Yes. All right, yeah. So probably Georgia George, first. Georgia's consensus number one. Um, um I would put probably Oklahoma two. They're undefeated over Ohio State. Then Ohio State there and then michigan state yes and then probably in my opinion probably alabama then it? or probably alabama then cincinnati then oregon would be my would be mine alabama then oregon then cincinnati mm. or cincinnati then oregon i think cincinnati then oregon then i agree. i'll give i'll give i'll give cincinnati credit with them being undefeated but I, I think I think Cincinnati they need they need help and if these teams keep winning, they're they're not going up, they're they're not going up. They they have to get these teams ahead of them to lose. They they can only go up from chaos. They can't go up because of themselves. I I think I think so. Yes. Who's the chair this year? Which conference? I I don't know. I. I 
Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, the you you think you think the Buckeyes should be at five? I I disagree. I think that the Big Ten East has proven itself uh, probably to be the best conference in or the best division, I think, in college football this year. Um, I mean, you had two, you had the four best teams in that division have two classics yesterday. Um, Penn State is better than their record, again, because they, because Sean Clifford got hurt. If Sean Clifford doesn't get hurt against Iowa, I think they beat Iowa, and I know they beat Illinois. Um, If not for Sean Clifford getting hurt, then it would just be totally and completely different. Mm-hmm. Um, so all, all due respect to, to Penn state and to, and to Sean Clifford. Um, now, is it good coaching? Is it good recruiting to be completely dependent upon a single player? No, it is not. But Ohio state was in a similar situation a couple years ago with Justin Fields, where they had no one behind him and they just were fortunate enough to never have to, Yep. Have to go into that. So I see in this committee, I see three Pac-12 teams. I see one. I see a Mac. I see a Mac. <laughs> I, see, I see one, one Big 12, one Big 10, um, one ACC. Yeah, one ACC, one SEC. And as Jared said, there's a Ohio, there's a Georgia State in here. Might as well count that one for the SEC. Let's be honest. Yeah. Yep. And a Wyoming. And a Wyoming, yes. I feel like you should almost exclusively make this up of people. Yeah, group of five, from... group of five, group of five majority. <laughs> or just from the FCS even. Mm-hmm. Yep. How, how is that not a good idea, in my opinion? I also think there should be more media members on this. I think you just have to be careful about who those media members are and that they don't have any affiliations. Um, yep. Maybe someone, I would say, like Dan Wetzel, who writes for Yahoo and doesn't have any association with um, with like the Big Ten or the SEC or anyone. Like you couldn't have anyone from Fox Sports and you couldn't have anyone from... ESPN or who does, you know, accepts any paychecks from yep. Fox, ESPN, the Big Ten Network, the SEC Network. Um, None of like them. they couldn't they couldn't collect any of those paychecks and still be valid in this poll, in my opinion. But I, I think there are some sports writers out there that if you find them without any sort of affiliation that could could potentially What's the word I'm looking? That isn't like a conflict of interest. I think, I think there should be more media members on here. Yep. All right, Jared. RJ is employed by by Fox Sports. All right, Jared. We got one question in our Ask Sloopcast um, mailbox here for for this episode. Uh, Buckeye Esquire asks if Wisconsin's destiny is it Wisconsin's destiny to represent the Big West every other year, no matter what. Kind of feels that way, doesn't it? Um, where, where, where are we at on the standings in the, in the big 10 East or excuse me, the big 10 West right now? Cause it feels like a disaster. Right, here we go. Jared, I am going to put this in the chat real quick. If you want to look at the chat, I am looking at the chat. All right. So the big 10 West, you have Minnesota number one right now, followed by Wisconsin and Purdue and Iowa all tied with the conference record there. Then Illinois, then Northwestern and Nebraska, who each have just one win. Yeah. Oh, God. How did we get here? (laughs) How did we get here? Uh, Minnesota, who like big credit to Minnesota, by the way. Kyle and I had had ruled their season over when they lost Ibrahim. So. They're like, oh, Minnesota could have been real good, but they lost Ibrahim. So we and we just sort of wrote them off. So huge props to Minnesota for not giving up on themselves the way we gave up on them. Um, So huge respect to them for that. And then Wisconsin, who also looked like a dumpster fire, is somehow still heavily involved. 
N- Nebraska. Uh, Nebraska has they have they're three and six, but their six losses, Jared, uh huh, have all been one score. Losses. I know. I I I almost feel bad for Scott Frost. Wow. I mean, but you lose to Purdue, shouldn't have done that. You lost to Illinois, shouldn't have done that. No. Close loss to Oregon, close loss to Minnesota, close close loss to Michigan, Michigan State. Okay, but this this should have been like a um five and four five and four team going going in to play um hosting Ohio State. Yeah. Um it's definitely a game for Ohio State to get their minds right. We'll talk about that on the Thursday episode, which once again, in case you, you missed it, uh, will be posted a tad bit late. It'll be posted not in the morning, but probably in the afternoon on Thursday. So keep an a, eye open for that. The um, Nebraska game is a noon game, by the way, Jared. Shocked. I am floored. I totally did not see that coming. Uh-oh. I'm looking to see. If Kyle, do we the... get do we get evil do we get evil Ryan Day in this game? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I feel like I feel like it. I feel like we don't get evil Ryan Day in this game. I don't. I don't feel like he has any ill will towards Nebraska or Scott Frost. And I feel like Scott Frost is already on. What? Who has anything against Nebraska Gangland? What? Did they did they piss in your Cheerios? They're like. What? Why? Why is everyone mad at Nebraska? I, I love Nebraska. Yeah, there there are homies from last year. Yeah. Uh, here it is. Here it is. Ohio State. You want to guess what the um, what the line is for this game early on? Uh, for Ohio State and Nebraska. Ohio State and Nebraska. Anybody else in the chat too? Who do you think? What do you think the uh, the line is here for Ohio State and Nebraska? It'll be in Lincoln, Nebraska, Saturday at noon. Uh, right, gang, gangland 20, says 19 and a half. Zach says 22 and a half. 20. Four and a half. Mm. Ohio State, 15 point favorite. 15. Well, I guess Nebraska's played all their games close, so I think that's probably worth stating, but uh, Nebraska does not have the defensive talent that Penn State had. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that's... uh, No. No. All right, Jerry. That's... All right, that is it. That's that's the only question we have in this episode. So I think think we can go ahead and end it there. Cool. Uh, want to once again encourage everyone to uh, drop by the Discord server. That's where we're hanging out. That's where we're having fun. And I'd like for everyone to come and join us. Kyle's wearing some of our Sloopcast merch right now. You can buy your very own uh, that parody. It's parody. Legally, it's it's parody. Parody design that you can buy at merch.thesloopcast.com. I'm wearing something from our 7071 store which is just the 7071 logo. Uh, the uh, That's our like non-podcast merchandise merchandise. Uh, and you can go to uh, 7071.thesloopcast.com to, to pick up some of that stuff. And Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, just my, 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 my hometown, the Bulldogs. Right here. Columbus Grove. Focus, focus, focus. The there Grove of Columbus, but not its Columbus, Columbus Grove. <laughs> yeah. Um, took care of business this last week in 35 nothing in um in football in their first week of the playoffs. And our regional champs in the men's cross country too. Good 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 weekend for teams of Scarlet and Gray this weekend. Okay, in case people don't know, Columbus Grove is also Scarlet and Gray. So it was a good weekend for Scarlet and Gray. <laughs> Both of our high schools wore the scarlet and gray. How about that? Hey, look at that. Uh, With all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Mm 